We're going to now cover how EQIs, or loaded stretching, can be used to build muscle and why it's effective at building muscle. Very effective, in, in fact. Well, first we need to go back to some previous capsules I, I, I made that talked about how to increase protein synthesis. Because muscle growth is all about increasing the rate of protein synthesis. Now, we mentioned mTOR. mTOR is the light switch, and protein synthesis is the light. If I turn on mTOR, I turn on protein synthesis. So when I'm training, the whole purpose is to activate mTOR to the greatest possible degree. Now, any type of resistance training, lifting weights, right, uh, will activate mTOR to some degree. Now, there are two type of muscle action that increase mTOR more so than the other ones. It is the emphasis on the eccentric. So if I emphasize the eccentric portion of a movement, I increase mTOR to a greater degree than if I'm just lifting the weight. The second type of muscle action that increases mTOR more so than the others is loaded stretching. Putting the muscle in a, load, in, a, in, a, in a stretch position while it has to fight a load by being tensed, right? Being tensed in that stretch position also is a very powerful way to activate mTOR. It's very important to know that because when we're going to discuss loaded stretching, especially EQIs, we will see how this applies. Uh, now, of course, mTOR can also be triggered uh, by hormonal responses, IGF-1 release, for example. If I'm releasing IGF-1, I trigger protein synthesis and activate mTOR to a greater degree. Now, if I'm doing loaded stretching, you have to understand something. First of all, I'm holding myself down in a stretch position or fly in a stretch position, for example. So my muscle, I'm starting the exercise with a loaded stretch, which activates mTOR very powerfully because it's one of the two ways a muscle can work that has the greatest impact on mTOR activation. The muscle is being contracted as hard as possible while being stretched. So that triggers activation of mTOR. Now, what happens as you fatigue? As I'm getting incapable of holding the weight in place because the fibers are fatigued, I start to sink down, sink down, sink down. It becomes a really slow eccentric action. Accentuating the eccentric is the second way to increase mTOR activation. So as you can see, EQIs is a very powerful growth producing method because it combines the two type of action that has the greatest impact on mTOR activation. But that's not all, right? I have to understand. Now we're talking about mTOR. Now I'm going to talk about occlusion. Occlusion is when blood cannot enter into the muscle, right? Two things impact that. The first thing is when a muscle is contracted hard, the harder it is, the, the more effective it is. When a muscle is contracted hard, that creates a vasoconstriction effect that prevents blood from entering inside that muscle. So if my muscle is contracted, it's tense, hard, blood cannot come in, or very, very inefficiently. If a muscle is stretched, it also prevents blood from entering inside the muscle. So as you can see, if I'm doing a loaded stretch and I'm tensing that target muscle as hard as possible, then I'm preventing blood from coming in. Why is that important? Well, it's important because, first of all, it leads to an accumulation of metabolites inside that muscle. All right. I'm burning fuel to maintain my position, so by using glycogen for fuel, I'm releasing lactic acid and hydrogen ions. But I cannot take them out because blood cannot come in to take them out. So I accumulate, accumulate, accumulate these things. And an accumulation of lactic acid inside that muscle has been shown to trigger the release of IGF-1. 
IGF-1 is a growth factor, a growth hormone produced inside that muscle with MGF, and that triggers protein synthesis. So by spending 60, 90 seconds in a state of acidosis inside the muscle, I create a very powerful if stimulus to release IGF-1. Not only that, studies have shown that when a muscle is stretched under load, the IGF-1 receptors become, become more sensitive. So not only do I release more IGF-1, the most anabolic hormone in the body, I'm also more sensitive to it. So right off the bat, I have two ways that EQIs build muscle. I'm activating mTOR because of the loaded stretch and the very slow eccentric, and I'm releasing tons of growth factors because my muscle is, cannot take the uh, metabolites out of the muscle. Now, there's a third way that EQIs work to build muscle, and that's by creating muscle fatigue. Now, even though there's no movement or very little, I'm still contracting my muscle as hard as possible, and I'm trying to hold the position. I'm fighting against a resistance. That still recruit the muscle fibers, and those muscle fibers still become fatigue, which is another trigger for muscle growth. Not only that, you actually learn to recruit the fast-switch fibers faster. Why? There's not even a movement. Normally, fast-switch fibers are, really, are recruited even when it's very heavy, or you're moving really fast, and I'm not moving fast at all, why would it increase the recruitment of fast switch fibers? Well, it's because you are deprived of oxygen. The slow twitch fibers work better with the use of oxygen. The, slow, the fast twitch fibers work great without the use of oxygen. So if blood cannot come into the muscle because the muscle is contracted and stretched, then the body will automatically switch to more fast switch fiber recruitment because it knows these fibers can function without oxygen. So you are programming your body to use those fast switch fibers. You are stimulating those fast switch fibers, which have the most potential for muscle growth. So the three ways EQIs work to stimulate muscle growth is they trigger mTOR activation because it's a loaded stretch and there's a very slow eccentric. It also increases the production of IGF-1 because you, blood cannot come in to take the metabolites out of the muscle. It also makes those receptors, IGF-1 receptors, more sensitive. And the last thing is they create a lot of muscle fiber fatigue, creating a great stimulation of growth, mostly in the fast switch fibers. So as you can see, even though it's not a lifting exercise per se, it can still build a lot of muscle. Now, if you are using loaded stretching to build maximum muscle, you want to use fairly heavy resistance. So you should not be able to hold a certain position for longer than 60 seconds. If you can last longer than 60 seconds, you need to increase the resistance. As we will see later on for improvement in mobility, and performance, you can go longer. But for maximum hypertrophy, you want holds lasting 45 to 60 seconds. So you use a weight that is very challenging for that duration. Normally, you shoot for a total on time under tension of two to three minutes. So it would be anywhere between three and four sets of 45 to 60 seconds of loaded stretching. And you would do that at the end of your workout. Let's say I'm, I train my chest, once my chest is pumped and fatigued, I would finish by one last exercise of, for example, loaded stretching on dumbbell flies. That would be the end of my workout.